I went to Celeste Track, one of the open communist representatives on campus, who had been after me to join, and said, you know, I'm going to think about it. I might join. And she gave me a big kiss on the steps of Royce Hall. But I didn't join, because I was still wondering, you know, because it, it still made me uh, uneasy, because I didn't think the Soviet Union was democratic. But then, a teacher that I was working for as a reader, Eric Beecroft, who was a Marxist, although he never claimed to be a Marxist, but he was. Uh, and he taught from the rigid viewpoint of Marxism and of actually followed the Communist Party line. But that was hard to say in those days because the Communist Party line was the United Front or the, uh, in general it had another name, but we called it the United Front. Popular Front was what it was generally called all over the world. But in the West here we called it the United Front. And it was really hard to distinguish except for Spain between their position and the Democratic position, Democratic Party position. But Decroft was suddenly fired. And uh, there was a campus uproar. The Communist Party got together and had him voted the most popular professor in school, uh, which he wasn't, because he was a kind of a dull teacher. But he, I think he was dull on principle. Uh, but anyway, uh, he was fired. And uh, when the resistance uh, of the students rose, uh, and, and, and there was opposition to the firing, uh, Sproul, who, was, who ran the University of California, quietly had Beecroft transferred to Berkeley. And after a year, he was dropped. But the transfer stopped the protests. The protests were front page news in the Daily Bruin. Uh, and that, the fact that, that Beecroft was fired so flatly, uh, made me feel that maybe the center had simply collapsed and we had a choice between fascism and communism. The Gallup poll did a, uh, Gallup did a poll about that time in which the question was asked if there was a war between uh, Germany and, and, and uh, Russia, which side would you want to see win? 17% said Germany, 83% said the Soviet Union. I mean, that's where it stood in those days. And in colleges, it was even more than that. Well, it sounds as if you were so heavy into politics, you probably didn't even notice what was going on with radio and the advent of television. If anyone mentioned television to me in 1939, I would have said, you're talking science fiction, and I don't want to hear about it because that's impossible. That was my position. But anyway, I did join the Communist Party in uh, June of 1939. And I attended a few meetings, and then they signed the pact. When the pact was signed, I had been a member of the Communist Party for only three months, <clears throat> I, that disturbed me so deeply that I stopped going to meetings, and sometime in 1940, I quit. I wrote a letter to the Bruin giving my reasons for quitting, uh, which were that there was no question that, that, that Germany was uh, uh, represented uh, uh, the utter destruction of the, of the civilized world, and that there was no question that Germany had to be opposed. Because the Communist Party, after the pact, suddenly had become neutral. Instead of calling for uh, uh, the uh, uh, assistance to England and France and opposition to fascism, it became neutral. And, 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 and England became the, uh, the heavy. The, uh, I forget the, what they called England, but uh, it was uh, kind of the mother of all, of all treasons. Uh, 